Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for RM Crater. Today we're going to be updating the chair tutorial that I worked on a while ago. Uh, there were some issues with it before and uh, some things have been fixed and I was able to recreate this um, tutorial. So uh, first things first, I have four chairs and I'm going to show you that uh, they only require one model now. So. Uh, this is exactly one model. It's facing technically north, but when it uh, spawns into the world, it basically will um, automatically detect if it, uh, or basically run and set the rotation to facing south. So if you look at, on the debug screen, it's facing south right now. Um, we're gonna basically create a small little sitting area. This one's already set up, so if we hold shift to sneak and then attack it, it will rotate. Uh, what's happening here is basically that the block is despawning and then a command, a vanilla command is being run to spawn in the entity again facing a different direction. Hello Jasper. Alright, so as you can see this will work for every rotation. And if we right click on the block, we can actually sit properly now uh, before the, because the model was a little bit, uh, modeled each direction, the sitting position was a little bit different. Uh, we can do that for every particular one and then we'll be sitting the proper direction now. Uh, now with that being said, let's uh, hop into Emperor, well, we'll start with block bench and then I'll hop into Emperor and show you how a lot of works. So in block bench, uh, what you want to create is your chair from the ground up. Um, one tip that I want to give you guys is uh, you probably want to create the meshes in increments of probably about four or four pixels high. This will allow you to use or basically set the block uh, sitting position a little bit easier. This is a total up to this point here is a total of eight blocks. So I am able to determine, you know, the overall height and then subtract that by um, how many percent I need. So for half a block, this would be a slab in height. It would technically be uh, 0.5 negative uh, 0.5 to basically get it from a solid block. Now this is a little bit taller than the one regular block so I had to make some changes to the code. Uh, over here on your group uh, you just need one single group and then you're going to uh, put all your meshes and stuff like that in that group. You can also have subgroups and then have the rotation if you want to do it that way. Um, and then your texture needs to be the same as well as the same uh, name for your file name and your model identifier name. Uh, now you can change the the name that you give them the entity but they all have all three of those have to be the same. All right so moving on to um, M crater uh, we're going to cover the entity first. So you want to create a basic entity and then you want to give it your GUI name or the name of the entity. Select your model, then select your texture. Uh, you want to set the radius size to 0 0.5. This will be one solid block. And then what you want to do is play around with your height. I have it set to 1.25, which is uh, one block and four extra pixels high. Uh, then the, the shadow radius is uh, 0 0.5 or one block. And then what we have is negative uh, 75, which is the position that I need to sit at a half slab uh, position because there is 25 and then there is the half slab part, which is 0 0.5 that equals negative 0.75. Uh, with that being said, uh, we have disabled the spawn egg by putting it under uh, no creative inventory and disabling this checkbox. You can play around with the sound on step or step sound, uh, hurt sound, and death sound, which I've added to be a ladder sound. Uh, behavior, you want it to be a creature so it doesn't get attacked by iron golems or anything like that. Um, also, hostile entities won't really go for it unless they're have some reason to. 
uh, like it attacking them or something like that. Uh, then you want the entity house set to two. That's important. Make sure it's only two. And then the movement speed and tracking range. Um, uh, movement speed and uh, tracking range or rendering distance. Rendering distance needs to be set to 64. The movement speed should be set to zero. Attack strength should, and armor protection should both be set to zero. Uh, you don't need any armor particular models for this. Uh, it's pretty much obsolete, pretty much, unless it's you're using a bipped model or zombie anyways. Um, now the immunity, you want to play around with this. You can disable it all or you can disable some of them. The most important part is just enabling the writable um, checkbox here. You don't need these two unless you want to control the chair. Uh, in most cases, people just want to sit on it, so just enable that one and leave these two unchecked. And lastly, you don't need these two. Particles, there's no particles. Inventory, no inventory. And uh, that leaves us to procedures. So on internal spawn, uh, basically what I've done is I've set the rotation when it's first spawned into the world to face south. Uh, south is set to zero, um, negative 90 is east, 90 is west, and 180 is north. So that will come important uh, pretty soon. The pitch is the, uh, the way looking up or down. The yaw is the direction of northeast, south, or west. So you want to play around with the yaw more than the pitch so that's all that's happening under when the entities first spawned under update tick uh, we are testing if the player is not being or not the player the entity is not being written if that's true then what we're doing is we're sending the entity to have a potion effect of 100 with a duration of uh, 120 ticks uh, with no particle effects or ambient um, like notices or anything like that and we're giving it the effect of slowness this will slow down the movement if it does start to move uh, the other thing that's happening is we're setting the movement vector this basically sets the veloci velocity of the entity um, and what we're doing is we're setting it to zero so it doesn't go anywhere and lastly, what we're doing is we're setting the local, well, two last things. Well, one of them is we're setting the location to X, Y, and Z. This will make sure that it stays in the exact same spot. And lastly, we're putting it in a cobweb for one tick. Now, this basically just ensures that when uh, it's not being written, it can't move anywhere uh, when the player pushes up against it or other entities. So. That's basically what happens uh, when it's doing that. Uh, you could probably get away with just doing that, but um, I'm not, I haven't tested that to see if that would work. With the new system, uh, with basically removing the entities um, from basically despawning it and then spawning it in again, it should uh, not matter if that's uh, in only being written or not. So with that, uh, let's move on to the next thing, which is when the entity is hurt. And what we're doing here is we're testing if the player, uh, the source entity, which is the player, uh, the target entity is the actual entity, the entity that we're working with or the mob. Uh, so we're testing if the source entity is sneaking, which would be the player and then we're despawning in the entity and then we're testing for the entity's um, direction that it's facing on the yaw axis. So if it's facing south, then we're going to be running a particular command uh, to make it face west. If it's west, then we're making it face east, uh, or pardon me, um, if it's west, then we're testing, basically making it face west, uh, north and if it's north and we're making it face east and so on. Uh, the command that we're running is the summon command. I'll explain how that works right now. So if I open up a document, I'll be able to explain a little bit easier because it's a little bit hard to read that. So we'll create a rich text document 
and I'll just open that, paste this in here and set the size to something readable. So what is happening here is we're summoning the, uh, using the summoning command, we're then using the um, mod ID uh, for our mod and then we're using the entity ID. And then what we're doing is we're using these symbols here which are uh, found on next to the one number on the keyboard which are if you hold shift and then press this key here then it will basically update to that particular one here so what that will do is it tests for the relative coordinates of where the uh in vanilla minecraft so we're testing for relative x relative y and relative z if that's true then we're also going to set the rotation of the entity and then we're going to put it into the set the yaw and the pitch now uh for south because south is actually zero you wouldn't be testing for the mbt variables so all this would cease to exist for south uh for your negative 90, which is your east, your 180, which is your north, and your 90 is for your west. All these would be needed for your, uh, to summon the rotation for the chair. So now that we got that out of the way, we got the procedure out of the way, and we can move on to uh, the last thing, which is when the entity dies, uh, what we're doing here is we're spawning an item item at the entity's uh, location, uh, which is X position of entity, Y, and Z. So now we will go over to the item uh, for the oak chair, and I've selected a custom item texture. You can even use a custom model if you wanted to. Uh, all these are basically default settings. What I have done for the um, procedures, I have used a when right clicked on block and location hand and what I've done here is I've tested if the entity's main hand is has basically the chair if true then we are swinging the um, current entity's hand uh, main hand then we're playing the sound of the ladder being placed and then we're going to test if the entity is in survival or adventure if either is true then what we're going to do is remove one chair from the entity's main or entity's uh, main hand. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to test if the um, block is basically at uh, a solid block where it currently is. Now, you might want to put this in like that uh, just to make it a little bit more stable. I don't know why I did not do that before there was probably going to be a little bit of an issue if i didn't do it so this is probably what you're going to want um to have it uh set up as so um yeah because you you need to test for the solid block first before you actually this is relevant if it's in creative or not if it's not a solid block it wouldn't be placing it so you would be technically re removing the item anyways. So this is the setup that you want. And then lastly, we're just spawning the chair at the current location facing whatever direction that it initially spawns at, which should be north. Uh, with that being said, uh, that's all there is to making the chair. If you have any questions, feel free to ask on my Discord server under the M Minecraft uh, or M Creator help section and someone will be able to help you there. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.